of all the booking protégés of Eddie Graham, so I'm including you, Dusty, Dutch Mantel, Bill Watts, there's probably more that I've, I've not thought of. Who do you think stayed most true to Eddie's vision of what pro wrestling should be as far as booking goes? That's a great question. No one's ever handed me that one. It's a bit tough as well because I know you're maybe, throwing you maybe into it. Watts, maybe Watts because I think Dusty was so good, but Dusty saw the future. He saw the entertainment coming where Eddie wanted to clamp down on that. You know, his thing was, you know, you got to make it as close to an athletic contest or they're not going to come. Watts could do that more than Dusty could or me and the other guys that you mentioned because Watts was isolated. You know, he's in the deep south. Uh, People aren't, you know, in Florida, it's a cosmopolitan state. It's a, not a southern state. It's a northern state. It just happens to be down south. Dusty would venture into entertainment more than Watts would. Eddie's thing was wrestling first. I mean, he, Florida was built of blood and guts in wrestling. But the wrestling usually was on the undercard. And then there was Eddie. And then when Eddie was smart enough, think about this, James. All those wrestlers that became promoters all stayed there welcome way too long. Eddie retired very young and gave the young guys a shot because he knew that people would know that he was the owner and that it would expose the business. Where Gagne, I mean, the bruiser who I thought was a wonderful guy, but I mean, you can't be keeping the young guys down and by going back to what I'm at the reason why Bill could do that the, the Mississippi and Louisiana was so isolated that he could keep it wrestling with Bill, I mean, I'm thinking off the top of my head is that I believe Bill put himself in quite a lot of main events as well. He was obviously the only he was the commentator, but then yeah. all of a sudden. Uh, someone slaps him or punks him out, and then all of a sudden Bill's back in the main event again to draw. Right, right. But the thing about that was they all did that. Like, uh, I'll give you a funny example. One time me and Mike were wrestling with the Samoans in the program, and we were supposed to drop the belts to them. And that was in the Bayfront Center, which was, uh, I don't know if you know it, that the Saturday night town was the big town, but it was four of them and they rotated. And St. Pete had been the town for years. And Mike and I went dirtback riding and Mike on Saturday and the show was on Sunday. And Mike flipped the bike and ripped his hamstring and couldn't wrestle. Eddie came in to wrestle with Samoans. Eddie did the job. Because I asked him why, and he said, well, people know I haven't wrestled in a year. I'm going to go out, and you all going to lose? Well, you are, I'm not going to wrestle again for another year. So Eddie had that foresight to do that. You know, again, Bill would do it because people don't think about this. They say, why does a promoter do that? Because you got Mark Loon and Curtis lurking in the background. You get a guy too hot, he's going to run into a TV production guy or a, a, a program director or somebody saying, oh, have you ever thought about running your own company? You know, so it, it was uh, because that was done quite frequently right before my time. And when I first got in the business, it was done. Uh, I remember about six big big uh, invasions or breakaways. 